What's going on, Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart. I'm back. I'm not going to waste any time. We're going straight into this thing. Uh, let's talk about Aquaman. So the first minute of this review is going to be a spoiler-free review. So um, let's talk about the characters. The characters, um, you had a lot of good characters in there. There was no wasteful characters in this whole movie. I mean, even characters like... Um, I can't say that. It's a spoiler for review. Every single character in this movie, pretty much, even the characters that weren't really flushed out at all, were interesting because they played such a pivotal part and they were so interesting and they were so cool looking. The film, visually, is astounding. The music spoke to my soul. Like, the music in this film was beautiful and it was, if you're 80s or a 90s baby, you're born in the 80s or you're born in the 90s, You'll recognise some of the music in this trailer, in this movie, and it will take you to a special place. The fight scenes were godlike. The fight scenes, and there were a lot of fight scenes and a lot of battles, which I fucking love, yeah, were absolutely incredible. They were like real long take fight scenes, yeah, like maybe a minute of just constant fighting the camera angle going through all these mad impossible camera angles following the action even though even yeah everyone's fighting see that this is a spoiler free review so i can't really go into too much right and um, but yeah i'll say the movie it is godlike i will give this movie personally a 10 out of 10 and i would definitely 100 percent recommend you go watch this movie every character's godlike and this is the it's it's the best it's the best um superhero movie yeah, I've watched. I I feel I it's the best superhero movie I've ever watched. That's what I want to say. I mean, the only thing that I would say is better is on on par with this in terms of a superhero movie is Avengers: Infinity War and Winter Soldier and um, Civil War. Those movies are the only ones that I could say that come close to this movie, right? Um, of course, I can't really say Black Panther because Black Panther is in a different realm. It stands in the God category, yeah? So I don't really rate um, Black Panther in terms of 10 out of 10 because it's beyond 10 out of 10, right? So if I'm saying 10 out of 10, so I'm film, this movie is a definite 10 out of 10. That's 100% on that. And it's something you definitely have to watch. All right. So yeah, that's that for that. And um, sorry, a little bit. I went on a little bit longer than a minute for my spoiler free review. But yeah, now we're gonna go into the complete review where we include spoilers. And yeah, we just go in. So if you're ready, let's go into this thing. So you've been warned. I'm gonna go into spoilers as well here. Yeah. So let's go. So yep, yeah, um, we watched Aquaman. And the movie was pretty godlike, man. Very, very godlike. As I said in my spoiler section of this, um, spoiler free section of this video. Look, the movie's a 10 out of 10, man. Like, the best way I can describe this movie for me is the trailer. The very first trailer of this movie, yeah, that came out like three, four months ago, yeah. That trailer was absolutely incredible, yeah. Like, I would give that trailer... A 10 out of 10. That is like the best trailer I have ever seen in my life. That first Aquaman trailer. This movie is better than the godlike trailer that they used to promote the movie. I've, I've, I've never experienced that before. I've, I, I mean, I feel like I have, but I can't remember when I have experienced that. Where the movie is seven or eight times better then the actual trailer, the movie, does that. This film did it. Easily. That guy, James Wan, is a don. I respect that guy. Because this is a whole lot of movie. They pack so much character, characters, so many themes, so many, so much lore, so many battles into one movie, and then you're not confused. You're overloaded with data, but you're not confused. That's why this movie is godlike. And even the fact that this film has got like 
like they have like the because the, they've got like, the seven kingdoms, the seven seas. Yeah, you've got King Orm, you've got King Neros, you've got King Atlanta, uh, Atanan or Atlan or something like that. You've got multiple kings of the seven seas. Yeah, um, they did manage to put them in enough. That you could understand who and what they were. For example, King Neros. I didn't really kind of understand why is this character important. Or I didn't really care about that character. He looked cool because it's Dolph Lundgren's character. And then you find out that he is Mira's father. Now I start to understand the significance of this character and why he's so important. And you know what I mean? So there are certain things that they put in the story and they relate them to characters that we already know. From um, the Aquaman trailer, from the movie that is going on right now, Mira was also in what is that movie called again? The first one with that you saw her Justice League, right? She was already in Justice League. You saw brief glimpses of her in Justice League, yeah. So you're already invested in her as a character, and her character was fucking godlike, by the way. Now let me tell you something here. Yeah? There's three reasons why I've watched this movie. Yeah, and I'm going to be very honest with you. Number one, that trailer. The first trailer that they released for Aquaman was just the best trailer I've ever seen for a movie, ever. It was incredible. It blew me away, yeah. Imagine me watching that in f on my TV. My 55-inch 4K HD TV. HD VR, whatever. It's the highest level spec TV you can get. I watched that trailer in the highest spec. It looked un in unbelievable, incredible. I'm confusing my words right now. Yeah, unbelievable. That's the first reason. The second reason, Mira. Amber Heard. That woman is beautiful. Like, And I don't like to say that type of stuff. Yeah, but that woman is just premium. Premium, bro. You know what I mean? So, and the other reason was Black Mantra. That's it. Those are my three reasons to watch the movie. Yeah? And I feel lucky that I did. Right? Because that movie was just top tier. Right? The movie was funny. It was interesting. It was visually epic. Visually. Not just the movie itself. The movie was epic. But the visuals were just un. Believable, man. It's just, what is this? I've never seen a movie so ambitious and vibrant and interesting. It's like a Final Fantasy movie, but just not Final Fantasy. It was just, it's like we're in the modern world, but what is that? Like, we're in the modern era in our day and age. This world exists right now, but it seems like it was in, like, it's in the future. Or the past. Or in a different world. But it still mixes with our world. So that kind of thing put me through a little bit of a trip. Like where is this? When is this taking place? Right so that can. something Elements like that took me out of the movie a little bit. But. It's like literally like split seconds. Because it was so fantastic. And then something would happen. Where it would bring us back to the real world. With like an explosion. There was a lot of explosions right. Like they'll be in a scene or something like that. Like um, I don't know. They've just solved a puzzle. To find out uh, basically. Where is the trident. Yeah or something like that. And then Mira and. Arthur are having like a scene together where they're just talking and having a peaceful moment and you start to like understand the character more than just the epicness of the movie and the visual overload of beauty that the movie is and then boom an explosion will happen and it just like shocks you and you're like oh shit yeah 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 we're, an, we're a superhero action movie do you know what I mean and stuff like that and yes dude and there was a chase the chase scene where it was um, Black Mantra from that moment on, basically, from when they were trying to find something. And then Black Mantra came, um, who's been given technology by King Orm. And King Orm is basically um, Arthur's mum and son, basically. It's a long story, but that is a little bit of a long story. Well, not too much, you know. She was, having, she was trying to escape and arrange. So Arthur Curry's mum was trying to escape an escaped marriage, um, um, an arranged marriage. She didn't want to marry the guy. She um, fought her way 
past everybody, yeah, escaped to Earth, got washed up on the lighthouse, got met by um, Tom Curry, um, Arthur Curry's dad. Um, he rescued her. They fell in love, had a baby, Arthur Curry, looked after them, but it didn't last for long because then Atlantis under King... Um, no, not under... Um, basically under somebody. I can't remember who was ruling Atlantis at that time. Wanted her back. They came. She bust all of them up. And that fight was godlike, might I add. And then afterwards, she said, you know what? They're always going to come back for me. I don't want to put off for all your life in jeopardy. So I'm going to go back. She went back. She married. She had a baby. They found out in Atlantis that she had um, a son to an earth dweller. And then they sacrificed her to a beast in the centre of the earth called the Trench. Everyone thought she was dead. Do you know what I mean? So even that is a little bit of a long-winded story, yeah? I mean, for me, it's easy to understand. Even the way the way that this movie was told was very, very comic book-like. Like, you have to be a comic book fan or just fucking love the... Um, the comic book genre to tell a, a story the way they've told the story because i followed it exactly if you read comics you should be able to follow this movie super easy but mo most people won't but the people that won't understand the pacing and the way the story is told they're not going to follow every single little bit like what you would right because there is enough crazy epic story main story for you to say i know one two three four five all right now in between one two three four five there is one and then in here there's like little bits of side story and interesting little bits of lore yeah you can throw that out or you can keep it in your mind two three little bits of story in between two and three with side story and then this little bit of story that you came across in one between one and two relates to what happens in three and four. So three and between three and four, little bit of story happens, and it relates to what happens between one and two, right? And so those bit there are little things in there for you. They're not dramatically important, but it does add to the character building and the world building it's not the most detailed but it's just interesting things to make you go like oh interesting that is cool you know what i mean so there was a lot of bits like that right and a lot of things makes you kind of feel actually like even like towards the ending part where you saw atlanta the queen of atlantis yeah arthur's mum she survived um fighting all those like weird sea creatures like the fucking scary sea creatures because there was like an end bit where they were trying to get to the center of the earth yeah and they had to fight these fucking scary sea creatures at night time on a boat in the middle of the ocean that scene was fucking amazing bruv that scene was so it was so final fantasy and um, comic book horror superhero like it was like a it, the, the whole movie just changed right but it was still the same movie yeah and they had to go to the center of the earth yeah and then they got to the center of the earth thought they were past everything and then you saw atlanta arthur's mum was there and she's been there for 20 years just fighting against the trench and those sea creatures the mum is fucking godlike bruv they made the woman Atlanta by that scene. You, you, her, his mum is godlike. No wonder he's so bomb. Yeah. So there are little things like that that just make you like, oh my god, man. You know, even Black Mantra, even Black Mantra's character as well, man. The character is fucking a don. He starts out as like just a normal space pirate, right? Not no space pirate, a a pirate of the sea. You know what I mean? He like um pirates vessels and submarines and steals their cargo and all that type of stuff right and aquaman saves people and you know a scene happens where um jesse uh, basically who is um black mantra's um father yeah um he what do they do they actually fight arthur 
because Arthur comes to the submarine and that fight scene in the submarine was godlike. It's at the beginning of the film. Yeah, that scene where he took off, took out all the pirates and the fight where he even fought Mantra, basically, and he pretty much killed Mantra's dad. Do you know what I mean? Because he could have saved Mantra's dad, but he said, no, you guys fuck about, you piss about, you kill people, you're pirates. I ain't gonna kill you, but you're in this fucking mess where death is basically pretty much guaranteed, yeah? You get yourself out of it. I ain't helping you. You guys piss about too much, yeah? I like that. I like the fact that he did that because there's nothing more that I hate worse than a goody two-shoes um, superhero, yeah? Like, let me just quickly go to something real quick, yeah? In Arrow. Arrow was, in season one and season two, he was a dog. He killed people. He didn't give a fuck. He did whatever he had to do to stop bad people from doing bad shit. Then all of a sudden, he turned into a little bitch, yeah? Getting owned up by every single woman in the show, yeah? Every single woman, yeah, that he would interact with, yeah? They would just tell him, shut your mouth. And then he'll shut his mouth. He'll, like, he'll hold it down, yeah? Like, the, like he'll be dating some woman and the woman says, don't chat to me like that, you know? Don't chat to me like that. And he'll be like, but what you say, shut up! And he'll be like, okay, okay, baby, okay, I won't talk. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Yeah? His own best friend, yeah? People that are around him, his loved ones, if they do little mistakes, yeah? He says, I can't forgive you, I have to turn you over to the police. His sister's a murderer, yeah? And his sister says, don't piss about, piss off, yeah? And then he holds that shit. Yeah, he gets owned up, and that kind of turns into a little bitch. Yeah, I hate that, those kind of characters. He says, oh, I, I refuse to kill anymore. Yeah. Arthur Curry's not like that. He will break your neck. He'll throw you into the in, uh, over, a, uh, over a building. He will stab people. He'll do whatever. It's not gratuitous. It's not emphasizing the fact that he just killed somebody. But he's just killed somebody. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't give a fuck. I like that about the character, man. You know what I mean? I even like the fact that every single, like, characters of Royal Descent, they're the only ones that can breathe above water. But when I say Royal Descent, I think they mean the first Aqua people. Because they used to, the first Aqua people used to live above the sea. But then Atlantis got sunk because they craved too much technology. They tried to reach for the stars too much they went into too much of the mystics or whatever and it sunk atlantis so you have the three very few first people of the first generation of atlantis that used to live above land so they have the ability to breathe air and it's only when they went underground and the thing the technology the mystic arts that they tried to unleash it gave that generation the ability to breathe underwater so that's why the first generation they say the royals have got the ability to Breathe underwater and breathe above land. And I did like that. That was really, really fucking cool. Right? And then certain people have got abilities. Like Mira's got the ability to control water. The woman can control like... She can make swords out of water. Or ice spikes. Yeah, that can actually impale people. Or manipulate water and stuff like that. And um, Arthur, who's got pretty much the best ability that you would have think is the best ability. The guy can talk to animals. He can talk to sea creatures. You don't think it's good. But when you see him communicating with a shark, yeah? When you see him communicating with the infinite creatures of the sea. When he gets the final suit, yeah? From the king, the first king of Atlantis. And he gets the trident. And he's got like the green, the green outfit with the golden armour. And the trident. And he comes out. And he's on the trench. Which is pretty much like a 500 foot. If not bigger. Sea creature from the centre of the earth. And the reason he can ride it is because. He can talk to it. And he can control it to a certain degree. I don't know if he's controlling it or manipulating. I think he's literally just communicating with it. And because he's such a, he's a good person. yeah, He's not trying to fuck about with the earth. He's not trying to fuck about. They like him and they say you know what. Yeah, you're worthy. Yeah, you are the king. You're the first one, the first blood from the descent of the of the true blood. Yeah, 
He could control that. That's a godlike ability. You could control all the sea creatures. And he was turning all the enemy sea creatures, the sharks, the sea lions, the um, the seahorses, the piranhas, everything. He was turning them all against the enemies. Mate, mate, the movie was just fucking amazing, man. And the soundtrack, I think I've not said it already, the soundtrack spoke to my soul. The soundtrack was so incredible. The movie visually was incredible. Um, even King Orm. Right, even King Orm, Arthur's younger brother, yeah, the guy that was the um, the, the um, son of the king of the, basically he was the arranged marriage, yeah, that Atlanta didn't want to marry, and he sacrificed basically her to the trench once he found out that she had had um, a kid with an earth dweller, basically. So yes, mate, it was really cool, man. Even where like, there was a bit where Black Mantra. Um, basically, he got given some the highest level technology from King Orm because King Orm was basically using Black Mantra to cause havoc on Earth, yeah, and just cause the conflict. He was he was basically the he was like the conduit that King Orm was using. To make it look like the earth dwellers are trying to provoke war with the sweet the sea dwellers right so orm was basically manipulating things from the sidelines with black mantra as his conduit it's only after black mantra's dad got killed basically in the incident because arthur kai didn't want to help him that uh black mantra was like you know what fuck rewards fuck work with you i just want to kill aquaman if you'll help me with that, I'll fight with you. If not, get the fuck out my way. Yeah. So those kind of things make me made me feel for Black Mantra, right? Even the lady Mira. I fucking like Mira. At first, I liked her. I'll be very honest with you. I liked her visually. I liked her because visually she just looks like unbelievable. Right? Such a beautiful woman, man. Unbelievable, beautiful creature, man. But then I started to like the character. Right? Like, just, like, I like... She doesn't give a fuck. Like, she's not a victim. She's not waiting for Aquaman. If anything, she's fucking leading Aquaman. I fucking like that. I don't want to see no woman that's no victim. Ain't no victim going to be anyone that deserves my respect. That no victim would deserve my respect in a Hollywood movie. Yeah? She's not a victim. She's not waiting for Aquaman to save her. If anything, she saved Aquaman multiple times. You know what I mean? Even there was one bit where she got saved. And I was thinking, oh. So she does get saved by Aquaman at least once in this movie. And it wasn't even Aquaman that saved her. It was um, Atlanta. Aquaman's Arthur Curry's mum that saved her. And I actually was relieved that it was another woman saving her. Not Aquaman. You know what I mean? So, yes, dude. You know, there was a lot of characters. Like, I'll give an example. King Neros. Um, if, I, if I'm even fucking saying his name correctly, man. Um, Dolph Lundgren Dolph Lundgren's character Who's basically uh, One of the Kings Of the Seven Seas Yeah And that guy Will turn out to be Nero's dad And then After I found out That, that he was King Was um, Mira's dad Then I started to Be more invested Into his character So that's what I'm trying to say They do the The law And the character building A little bit reverse Yeah they show you the characters that they've been investing for a long time. And then they show you the parents and who the parents are and what they are. And only because those parents or those people are directly influencing or have been influenced to the main character that you're interested in, be it Aquaman or Black Mantra or Mira, it's only then that you are invested in those characters. Like the past characters. Because as I said, I like King Nero's because of Aquaman. Um, what's that guy's name again? Um, Volko, yeah? Who's the advisor of King um, of King Orm. And the guy that has been teaching Aquaman for all the years, yeah? I really was interested in him because he was like a father figure to Arthur Curry. Aquaman, right? But even then, his character was still very cool. He has a very small part of the movie, yeah? But every time he was in it, you know 
fucking William Dafoe. His acting is so good, superb actor. So, you know what I mean? There was, you could tell when it's directed really well, and the actors are really good. When the characters have small scenes, not much scenes, but every scene they are in, they make an impact. What can I say, man? The movie was godlike. I really like the movie. For me, the movie is a 10 out of 10. It's a 10 out of 10 movie. There's no question about that. And would I recommend you see it? Absolutely. Um, as I said, so basically in closing, I will say story, good. Pacing is good. Um, maybe the the content yeah, of the movie is not all necessary. Yeah, and then the scenes that were in there maybe were shortened a little bit. So, so basically, there's an important scene with um, King Neros and Orm, yeah, where they're discussing things. Maybe that scene will be too short, where it should have been a little bit longer. But then there'll be a scene with um, Arthur and Volko, and then that scene will be a little bit too long. And it was like, that doesn't really serve any purpose in the movie, right? And then all of a sudden, it will cut to something else, right? So the adventure that they'll go on is like 20 seconds. And then it will cut. And then they'll be in a completely different area. And they're like, okay, cool. So there is that. But that's me nitpicking, right? Music, godlike. Visuals, wondrous. Absolutely fantastic visuals. Epic movie. There was not one, not one wasted character in this whole movie it was all just wonderful fight scenes unbelievable i would never believe that hollywood could do a fight scene like they have in this movie the chase scenes the chase scene in this movie with mira and aquaman against um black mantra and orm's elite troops wow wow uh so yeah I mean, there's nothing more I can really say about that. Uh, I could go on forever talking about this movie. So I'm going to end it there. I'm going to say thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, I definitely recommend you go watch this movie. Uh, so, Warriors, until my next video, stay blessed, take care, and um, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Take it easy.